Now, we talked about cheese. She loved cheese. Does cheese have hormones in it? Well, yes. Okay. Biology 101. Cows do not make milk. Mammals do not. No, no mammal makes milk. Humans do not make milk until they have become pregnant and given birth. So every glass of milk that you ever drank in your life came from a cow who was artificially inseminated. And it's not a very pretty picture. The farmhand puts his left arm up her rectum, uh, up to his elbow, grabs the, you can feel the uterus through the rectal wall, and he holds it steady. And then with his right hand, he takes what looks like a knitting needle and rams it through her cervix and ejects semen from a bull. And she is now fertile, uh, uh, fertilized. And nine months later, the gestation is finished. She gives birth. Okay. It's a creepy process. Ethically, people object to it, obviously, for all the reasons that you know. The calves are taken away. The males are killed for veal. The females are, late, are raised in isolation, and they are going to be inseminated too. Creepy stuff. But the reason I'm telling you this now is the biology of it is important. She's pregnant for nine months. During her pregnancy, she is milked during much of the pregnancy. During her pregnancy, what's she making? She's making estradiol, of course. And so it gets in her plasma, but it gets in her milk. And so down the little milking tubes goes little bits of estradiol. It ends up in your yogurt, in your cheese, in your sour cream. And I don't care if it's organic dairy or not. It's got estradiol in it. And if you feed it to your eight-year-old son or your seven-year-old daughter, you are feeding them female sex hormones every day. Or if you eat it yourself. This is part, part of why researchers have found that male infertility is associated with cheese consumption. Okay. All right. Am I cheering you up? <laughs> it's frightening, isn't it? But surprising. Um, so yes, uh, cows are impregnated annually on every dairy farm. They are milked well into their pregnancies. Estrogen gets in the milk. And if you are drinking dairy milk, you are getting estrogen. And I would encourage you to avoid dairy milk. Same thing, by the way, same thing for goat milk, same thing for organic skim. It doesn't matter what country it's from. It's always the same. Okay. So there's no such thing as hormone-free milk. And by the way, to underscore this, uh, many dairy farmers, uh, some, some will use uh, bovine growth hormone to stimulate more milk production. Others will not. So farmers who do not use bovine growth hormone, which is most of them, went to the FDA and said, we want to label our milk as hormone free because we're not using bovine growth hormone. Well, the FDA said, your milk isn't hormone free. I don't care who you are. It's got estrogen in it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. So you will never see a carton of milk labeled hormone free because it's all got hormones in it. The dairy industry doesn't want to tell you, but there it is. Okay. Um, now I want to go to the other end of the reproductive window. Oh, by, by, by the way, before I go here, I just want to mention to you, um, milk is probably associated with breast cancer as well. And probably for the same reason, the, the reason that you don't hear much about this is that in the American population in general, it's been rather hard to tease out the relationship between dairy and breast cancer. The population is relatively homogeneous with regard to dairy intake. Um, however, we have two lines of evidence that have come in quite strongly. One is the Adventist Health Study, which includes many women who don't, milk, don't consume milk at all, and many who consume a lot of it. And you see this nice or frightening uh, relationship between dairy intake and breast cancer. The other it comes from China the China Biobank. China is a country that historically didn't consume dairy products at all. It was not their thing. No milk. And during Westernization, of course, milk and cheese have come in. And you now see still dairy products are not big in China. But among those who have incorporated them more in their diet, you're seeing more and more breast cancer. So the researchers at the China Biobank strongly believe, as do the researchers at Adventist Health Study, that there is a relationship that becomes obvious when you look at those who avoid dairy and those who consume substantial amounts of it. So my advice in general is to avoid dairy completely. Okay, now let, let's go ahead and let's talk about the, the vasomotor symptoms of menopause. We're now, a woman's around 50 and her reproductive window is, is coming to its end. And for some, they get vasomotor symptoms. What's that? That's hot flashes. It's the middle of the night. You wake up 2 a.m and you're in a pool of sweat, or it's during the day, and you're at the board of directors giving a, a presentation, and all of a sudden the room feels like it's 150 degrees, and you're fanning yourself and sweating. Okay, uh, you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, hey, I got the perfect thing. It's hormone replacement therapy. Would you like a prescription? You'll say, sure, give me anything. 
And so the doctor gives you a prescription, which you take to the pharmacy. And on the way there, um, as somebody's driving you, you look on your phone for the risks of hormone replacement therapy. And you look on the FDA's actual prescribing information that's supposed to come with your prescription. And you say to the person driving, stop. Have you seen the list of side effects of things that, that come from hormone re replacement therapy? Let's go home. <laughs> Let me do a little more Google searching on this. Okay, so here's what you'll find if you look into this. Back in the 1980s, Japanese women were eating a mostly rice-based diet. Rice, vegetables, some fish, uh, some meat, uh, not a lot, um, and, and really no dairy. And vasomotor symptoms, hot flashes were extremely rare. Maybe 15% of women had them. They were not severe usually, and they didn't even have a name for, for them. They didn't call them hot flashes. It was just a little warming that would come and go. But that was the 1980s. What happened? McDonald's arrived in Tokyo and Osaka and all over the place. And the Japanese diet suddenly started westernizing. It's still nothing like what a person would eat in Minneapolis but fat content went way up, meat went up and dairy went way up. And oh, as the burger uh, culture came in, hot flashes went way up to about 40%, a little bit more in the next couple of decades. Breast cancer rates doubled, heart disease went up, obesity became much more common. When the plant-based diet or large, mostly plant-based diet is being switched to a more meaty diet, problems arise. Okay, so what's the deal? with this plant-based diet? Well, in Japan, part of it is that it was a lot of rice and a lot of vegetables and less meat, so it's more plants. But the other part is soy. Soybeans, tofu, tempeh, miso, edamame. Soybeans are a big part of Asian culture and soy uh, soybeans contain isoflavones and they have names like genistein or daidzine or glycetine. Now, these isoflavones are famous because they help prevent breast cancer. As you, as you are aware, soy products reduce breast cancer risk. And for women diagnosed with breast cancer, soy, soy products also reduce the likelihood of dying of it. Oh, by the way, for some, some people have got this opposite. They think that soy causes cancer. Um, that's not the case. Let me come back to that in just a minute. No, soy, soy clearly reduces breast cancer risk. And, and reduces mortality for women diagnosed. But, but this, the soy isoflavones also are credited with perhaps being one of the explanations for why women reaching menopause in Japan have less hot flashes. However, that's not the whole reason. If you went down to Mexico, about two hours west of Cancun is a town called Valladolid and another town called Chichimila. And researchers from Canada went down there and they interviewed 118 Mayan women. And they said, how are your menopausal symptoms? And the answer was, what symptoms? None of the women had any symptoms. They didn't have hot flashes, they didn't have anything. It was just their reproductive window closed, that's it, thank you very much, we're done. I'm At my age, I don't need a toddler on my kitchen floor. All right, now, what does it have in common with Japan? They eat a grain, it's not rice. Ah, corn, lots and lots of corn. They eat a bean. Now it's not a soybean. What are, they, what are the beans in the Yucatan Peninsula? Black beans. Really? Yep. Okay, a lot of corn and black beans. And not just that, but a lot of vegetables. This vegetable is called lechaya. Now the culture has changed dramatically. American tourists have come down there and flooded in and they've built Walmarts. But you can still go into a Walmart and they'll sell you corn tortillas and black beans and la chaya. So these foods are still commonly eaten uh, there. And this seems to play a role in a, in a, a woman's uh, hormonal function. Okay, so my research team decided to, decided to put this to the test. And now bear in mind, we didn't know, was it the plant-based diet? Was it the soybeans? What is it that's, that's beneficial? We don't know. But we brought in 84 women. They all had hot flashes and half of them were randomly assigned to a diet group, the other half in a control group. Now, the diet was a plant-based diet. When I say plant-based, I mean vegan, no animal products. Secondly, minimize oils. Third, a half, half a cup of cooked soybeans every day. 
That was the whole thing. No hormones, no medicines, no exercise, nothing. And when it came to weight, what we saw was that it caused pretty nice weight loss, about eight pounds in 12 weeks. Okay, that's a surprise. That's great. Very nice. But what the women were in the study for was their hot flashes. What happened there? Well, what we discovered is that among the controls, there was a little bit of a change. But among the intervention group, there was this enormous drop, 88% drop in moderate to severe hot flashes. That's huge. That's the kind of thing that HRT does, except what are the side effects of a vegan diet? You lose weight, you feel better, your cholesterol falls, your blood pressure comes down, your digestion gets better. The side effects are all good. Okay, so hot flashes are way, way down. The women felt this was just a life-changing experience in many ways, but we looked at other things too. The vasomotor symptoms, the hot flashes improved more in the diet group compared to the control group. The psychosocial symptoms like mood, depression, stress improved more. Uh, physical symptoms, headaches improved more and sexual symptoms improved as well. We weren't expecting that, but that's what happened. Okay. Um, now let me come back to what I mentioned earlier. You will hear people say with great emphasis for some unknown reason that soy must cause cancer. What they're thinking about is that there had been some experiments on animals decades ago that seemed to suggest that soy products could cause breast cancer. This turns out not to be the case in people. Um, and as of 2008, there were eight large studies that were put into a um, meta-analysis. And what you see, particularly in Asians and Asian Americans, where you see a really a very large uh, gradient between no soy or little soy to very high soy intake, what you see is that the highest soy intake is associated with about a 29% re reduction in risk of breast cancer. All right, let me be clear. The more soy, the less breast cancer they consume. Now, what if women have breast cancer already? And unfortunately, you will hear this naive advice by well-meaning, ill-informed physicians, some of whom are even oncologists, saying to a woman diagnosed with breast cancer, who's saying, what shall I eat? Can I eat soy? And the doctor might mistakenly say, don't eat soy. If you do that, Look, look at this, look at these results. This was a meta-analysis published in 2013. Five prior studies were combined, more than 11,000 participants. They were all women with breast cancer. The red bar is the women who avoided soy or very little soy. They've got the highest mortality. The yellow and green bars are the women who had cancer, but they could started consuming a lot of soy and their risk of dying of it was substantially less, 25 or 30% less, whether they were estrogen receptor negative or positive. Let me be clear about this. If a woman avoids soy after a breast cancer diagnosis, she is now officially in the high mortality group. If she avoids soy, she's more likely to die. If these if these research results apply to her. If she consumes a lot of soy, she's more likely to survive. Now, you can consume non-GMO soy. It's easy to find. It. Go to the store. Every tofu block that is marked organic, by law, cannot be GMO. Same with soy milk. Very easy. Okay. So let's dive in a little bit more. If soy protects against cancer, okay, those isoflavones, genistein, daisine, glycetine, there are two different estrogen receptors. Estrogen receptor alpha, that's where estradiol attaches. The estrogen your body makes or the estrogen in, 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 in dairy products attaches to estrogen receptor alpha, especially, but estrogen receptor beta, that's preferentially where the isoflavones in soy attach. Ah, oh, okay. So it looks like that soy is beneficial as part of the approach to menopausal symptoms um, and will reduce uh, breast cancer risk. And by the way, for men, uh, we see the same effect. Uh, for men consuming the most soy, their risk of prostate cancer diminishes substantially too. Okay, very good. Um, by the way, you might think, okay, how do I make those darn soybeans? If you'd like to do this, let me show you how. Uh, first of all, ed edamame are delicious. They're an appetizer you'll get at the Japanese restaurant, but that's not what I'm talking about. Edamame, that's baby soybeans. They're, they're immature soybeans. Uh, if you leave them on the vine for a little bit longer, they become mature soybeans and they have a lot more isoflavones in them. So if you go online, you'll see brands like Laura or others 
um, non-GMO, organic, whatever. You buy whichever one you want. Then you put it in your Instant Pot or your whatever pressure cooker you have. Pressure cook them for 40 minutes. You want them to be nice and soft. If they are little rocks, they're not cooked enough, okay? Or just cook them on the stove like regular beans. Soak them overnight, cook them for an hour, hour and a half. Make sure they're well cooked though. And then you use them like, like pine nuts. Uh, put them on a salad. Uh, put them in soups or whatever. But the dose is a half a cup per day. So if you are making dinner for the whole family, I want you to reserve a half a cup of soybeans for you. Don't just mix them into a dish because you're not going to know what your dose was. So reserve your half a cup. Um, now, if you want to, for extra credit, you can roast them after you cook them. You pressure cook them first. Then you take a baking sheet and put some parchment paper on top and then cover it with the, the cooked soybeans. And what you will, uh, you, you wanna make sure that they're nice and kind of thinned out. Um, and then you put them in the oven, bake it at about 350 for an hour, and they should come out nice and dry. If they're not dry, if there's a little moisture left, put them back in the oven, you want them dry. And then you put salt or cayenne or garlic or whatever you put on them, throw them in a bag. And this is handy because if you're traveling, you're not bringing your pressure cooker with you, but you can bring the roasted soybeans with you. Or you can actually buy them pre-roasted. You'll see brands like Toasted's from Laura, the Laura brand online. You know, they're, they're very handy. Um, but let me be clear. All three of these steps are important. If you're a woman with hot flashes, vegan, meaning no animal products at all, don't, don't try it by having chicken without the skin a couple of days a week and that ought to work. Uh -uh. This is vegan, no animal products. Number two, and this is really important, keep oils really low. We do not know why exactly, but for some women, for some reason, women who have more oils in their diet seems to, they, they don't seem to do very well. Even things like extra virgin olive oil that you bought from Tuscany, um, you want to keep oils really low. That's challenging in today's world, but do this, you'll see it helps. And by the way, that also helps with, with weight loss. And third, half a cup of cooked soybeans every day. Now you could use soy milk if you want, but you've got to drink two quarts of it per day to get this uh, soy isoflavones that you would get in a half a cup of cooked. <music>